Welcome to the Marcher Die Show today. Glad to have you joining me and looking forward to our conversation together today. If you are not yet subscribed to this show, to this podcast, please go ahead and subscribe now. Whatever podcast platform you are listening from, make sure that you are subscribed. That's the very first thing you need to do. The second thing you need to do is go over to YouTube. When you get a chance, you can find this video, this content, other content just like it, very similar. You can find all of that on YouTube. Find the video uh, episode of this uh, podcast, of course, and I'd love for you to join me there. Go ahead and subscribe. You can go there. Go to YouTube. Search for my name, Jeremy Stallnecker. You'll find my channel. Subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Make sure that you are notified when this show and other content comes online. And uh, I'd love to connect with you there. YouTube is a great place to leave comments, to share content out. Good place for us to connect as well. So please check that out. That would be awesome. And then take some time finally to go over to my website, jeremystallnecker.com. jeremystallnecker.com. You can find links to this podcast, to another podcast that I'm involved in, bio information, social media information, and more importantly, probably most importantly, you find my blog there, and that's where I write uh, just about every week. I say every week, uh, just about every week. Once in a while, I miss a week. I try to make up for it later. Uh, a lot of good content there as well, so please check that out. But again, very, very glad to have you joining me. I love this format. Uh, I have the opportunity to speak in uh, a lot of different formats, we'll say, a lot of different contexts. Uh, I really enjoy preaching. I have the opportunity to preach. I just did this last Sunday at a great church in San Diego. A friend of mine is the pastor there and had the opportunity to preach for him. I really, really enjoy it. It's great. Uh, preaching may be my favorite thing. Uh, it's very humbling. It's an incredible opportunity. I'm very thankful for the opportunity to do that. But I do that. Uh, also uh, speak in uh, other settings, maybe a more secular setting outside of church. Uh, a lot of the opportunities that I have revolve around the military and the work that I do with the Mighty Oaks Foundation. I'll speak there talking about spiritual resiliency, talking about how to be resilient and what that looks like. I always enjoy that as well. I write, again, on my blog and other places you can find my writing, and uh, I really enjoy that. I've got a great podcast on the Salem Podcast Network. Salem Media is uh, an incredible organization. Spent actually three days with the folks there at Salem last week. Uh, three days, maybe two days uh, with them last week, and uh, man, really enjoyed it. Great opportunity to learn more about the company, learn more about the work that they do, heard from some great speakers, and got a, just incredible insight. Very, very thankful for that opportunity, but I have a podcast there as well uh, called The Situation Report. If you are not listening to that, go and find The Situation Report. You can find it, uh, again, on every podcast platform, or you can go to Salem Podcast Network, the Salem Podcast Network. You can watch the videos of that podcast there. Actually, three times a week I do that podcast. Revolves around cultural issues, what's happening in our world, how we navigate that, how we understand it. All of that is there at the Situation Report. So really enjoy that as well. But probably my favorite place to connect and to communicate <laughs> is right here. Um, I love it because uh, it's an opportunity for me just to share what's on my heart. I've had some great conversations with folks about things that I deeply care about and are very important to me. Uh, again, preaching is very important to me, and probably the thing I take the most serious in my life is preaching as I stand in front of people and open the Bible and do my best to communicate uh, what God says there and the application that we can make to our lives. I take that very, very seriously, of course. I love the other podcasts. I love the other opportunities that I have. But this show, The March or Die Show, really is me just talking. And um, if you've listened to this often, you may have asked yourself, does he even have notes when he speaks? <laughs> just making this stuff up as he goes? Uh, sometimes the answer is kind of. I have uh, a thought. I have certainly an idea, some things I want to share. But probably the least structured time that I have, unless I have a guest on, is this podcast. And I love it because, again, there's so many things going on in my head and in my heart and things that I want to share. And, and uh, I love having the opportunity to do that. So thank you for joining me on this journey, typically a smaller or shorter conversation as well. And I really appreciate it. But that's why I encourage you, go over to YouTube, uh, listen there, watch there, leave me comments there, share this content out. If there's something that you would like to see me talk about or you're interested in hearing me talk about, 
let me know either on YouTube or on my website, jeremystonlicker.com. I love this time together. This is very important to me, and that's why I continue to do this, and I hope that it's a help to you as well. And today's topic is really something that is born from so many thoughts that I've had um, over this last several months. This year has been an interesting year for me. Um, some, some things going on in my world, not bad things, but things going on in my world that have uh, really pushed me to have thoughts about faith and thoughts about God and thoughts about uh, future and what that looks like and what it looks like to pursue God by faith, to trust God, but continue moving forward at the same time. Uh, questions about how you move forward when you don't exactly know what that looks like. You can't see the end from the beginning. These are all topics that I talk about on this show, of course, but I've been thinking on these things a little more deeply over the last several months. And um, man, I just want to share these thoughts with you. I hope they can be helpful. I don't think that most of us are that different from one another. I think we're all kind of the same. We may have a different background. We may have had different things happen to us, different events take place in our lives. But for the most part, I think that we're pretty much alike. Uh, We were created by God. God, the creator, created in us uh, so many similarities in the way that we process information, the way that we think, the way that we feel, the way that we deal with things. And again, we're different. We're unique. We're individuals. And I'm grateful for that as well. But we're not that different. You may have asked questions like this. I've asked these questions before um, of myself. I've even asked them of others in moments of desperation. But questions like, what do you do when you don't know what to do? You've heard this question before. What do you do when you don't know what to do? Things are happening in your life. Things are happening in your world. You need to respond to them, but you don't know how. What do you do when you don't know what to do? Here's another question that I ask myself. Maybe you've asked yourself this question. Uh, How do you move forward when you feel stuck or overwhelmed? (laughs) Have you ever asked that question? Have you ever felt stuck or overwhelmed? How do you move forward when you feel either stuck because of the circumstances in your life, stuck, I, I can't really move, I'm stuck, or I'm just overwhelmed? I may not be stuck. I could move, but I'm so overwhelmed by what's happening in my life that I don't know what to do. A question that I ask myself often is this one. How do I regain focus in my mind (laughs) when it feels like my mind is running 100 miles an hour in 100 different directions? There are so many things happening in my family, in my job, uh, with friends, in the world. So many things happening around me that... I I can't gain perspective. I can't uh, grab focus. My mind is spinning. I had focus. I've lost it. How do I get it back? What do you do when you don't know what to do? How do you move forward when you feel stuck or overwhelmed? How do you regain focus when it feels like your mind is spinning 100 miles an hour? Have you ever asked yourself any of these questions? Again, I don't think we're that different. I've asked myself these questions. I'm guessing that you've probably asked yourself the exact same questions. This is the March or Die show. This is about understanding how we can move forward when it would be easier to stay where we are and just give up, to stay where we are and die. How do we continue to move forward? That's what these questions reflect. How can I continue moving forward when I just don't know exactly what to do? I can't get a clear mind on exactly what I'm supposed to do. I asked myself those questions. Maybe you do as well. And often my response is to do nothing. (laughs) Now here's what's crazy. I have anxiety because I can't see the future because I don't know what to do. Anxiety. Some of that anxiety really hinges on an understanding of fear. I don't know what to do. Anxiety arises in my heart because I don't know what to do. That anxiety can give way to fear. I'm afraid of what might happen, and so I do nothing. Maybe it's because I don't want to make the wrong decision. Maybe it's because I'm so unclear about what is the right decision that I'm just not going to do anything. 
I'm just going to hold. March or die doesn't leave a lot of room for hold. <laughs> I know sometimes you need to hold. I know sometimes you need to rest. Sometimes you need to take a break. Sometimes you need to take a step back and gain perspective. I get that, but all of that requires action. That's different than deciding to do nothing. Deciding to rest requires action. I've made a decision. I'm doing what I need to do so that I can then continue moving forward. Taking a step back to gain perspective requires action. That's not doing nothing. What I sometimes do, though, when I feel overwhelmed, when I'm not sure about what's next, is I just don't do anything. I stop. And I wait. You say, well, what are you waiting for? I don't know, <laughs> but I'm waiting. What's great is if I wait and pray, I can then blame God for my lack of action. Now, I wouldn't say I'm blaming God, but I can say something like, well, I would do something if God would just show me what he wants me to do. I pray for God's direction in my life. I pray for clarity, for understanding, and I think we should pray for those things, for direction, for clarity, for understanding. The psalmist said that God's word is a lamp to his path. It's a light. We should understand that. We should embrace that. We should understand that God does want to guide us and to direct us, to show us the way forward. He certainly does, and we should pray for that. We're told in James to pray for wisdom when we feel as though we lack wisdom. In Hebrews chapter 4, to come boldly to the throne of grace, to receive both grace and mercy. I love it. God wants us to ask him for clarity and for direction. But sometimes what I'll do is nothing. I'll sit still. God, I'm not moving forward. I will do nothing. Show me what you want me to do. And when you show me clear enough for me to feel comfortable, then I'll begin moving forward again. And then if God doesn't do that, I can simply blame him. Now, I know that most of you would not use those words, words like blame God, blame Him. But we have those thoughts, don't we? If only God would show me, if only God would give me a clear mind, then I would do something. But because He hasn't, I won't. For those of us that are around church, Christian people, people that read the Bible, we might even call this faith. You see, we're told in Scripture that we are to wait on the Lord. Psalm 27 and verse 14 tells us to wait on the Lord. Other verses tell us to wait on the Lord. And so we'll say, well, what I'm doing is not nothing. What I'm doing is waiting on the Lord. And by that, we mean I'm going to sit in this spot and wait for God to blow me out of it. If God wants me to do something else, he'll drag me to that something else. He'll make it so clear and so undeniable, so irresistible that I must take the next step. If God wants that, then he can do that. But if he doesn't do that, then I'll wait. Uh, and I'm waiting on the Lord. That's what the Bible tells me to. We might even call it having faith. I'm going to have faith in God. I'm simply going to trust Him. I'm waiting on Him. Here's the crazy thing. We say, I'm trusting in the Lord. I'm having faith in God. I'm waiting on God. While ignoring what the Bible says about trust and faith and waiting. I'll read a couple verses to you. You probably read these yourself or heard me mention them in the past. Psalm 37, verses 3 and 4. Trust in the Lord and do good. <laughs> you got that? These are connected. Psalm 37, 4. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. Do you get the order here? Trust in the Lord and do something. And when that happens, then God will take care of you. Verse 4, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. We could talk about those verses a lot. They mean so much. Psalm 37, an amazing psalm. But you'll see that there's a lot of action in this waiting and trusting on God. 
Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. I've done a podcast almost entirely on this, uh, an episode almost entirely on this. I preached a series of messages last year uh, at my home church out of these verses. Some of the most well-known verses in all of the Bible, and for good reason. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says this, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. This is crazy. Uh, Again, we can say, I'm waiting on the Lord. I'm doing nothing. I'm trusting in God. I'm having faith. I'm doing nothing. God needs to make it so clear, so abundantly clear in my mind what's next, uh, that I have no uh, opportunity or option but to pursue that. I have to do it. And yet the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Now, doesn't that give the idea, the understanding that we're moving, (laughs) that we have ways, that as we're trusting in him, we're moving There are ways we're moving, we're going, there's action. And while we're doing that thing, trusting him and acknowledging him, what is he going to do? He's going to direct our paths. You get the mental image here that movement along the road is where God begins to work. It's as we're trusting him and acknowledging him and continuing to move forward that God then directs. John 15 and verse 4, out of the words of Jesus, uh, the mouth of Jesus himself, he said this, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. It gives us this picture, this image, John 15, you could read the rest of the passage, gives us this image uh, of continual relationship. It's walking with a friend. It's talking as you walk. It's doing as you communicate. It is abiding in. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 23. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I Paul and made a minister and then he goes on and talks about the blessing in your life but it begins with these words if you continue in the faith grounded and settled we wouldn't often use these words all together continue again it's the idea of action of ongoing action continue grounded and settled <laughs> many many other verses that we could go to but you know what we learn from these verses That trusting in the Lord, having faith in God, these concepts, these truths, these essential elements of the Christian life are not static. Waiting on the Lord, trusting in Him, and having faith does not mean that we sit still. It means that we move forward, doing what we know to do right now while allowing God to direct our steps. I've talked about this a lot because this verse has been so meaningful to me over the last uh, year or so. But Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1 tells us to run with patience the race that is set before us. This is good. (laughs) You know what this means? It means that we need to get up and do what we know to do right now, whatever that is. Maybe it's just the next step. Maybe it's just the next job. Maybe it's getting up and and taking care of your kids today, whatever it is for you. There's a lot of unknowns, a lot of unanswered, but you can't be responsible for what you don't know. However, you are responsible for what you do know. A phrase that has jumped out at me a lot as I've considered these things, is a very simple three-word phrase. Do the work. Do the work. (laughs) I I love it because so often as Christians, we say it's not about work, it's about grace. No denying, the Bible is very clear that salvation a relationship with God through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, the forgiveness of sins, 
That is all of God and not of us. It is a grace gift. It's given to us freely by God. We receive it, but we do nothing to earn it, to deserve it, to merit it. It's all of God. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9 tell us that by grace we're saved through faith, that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The next verse, though, tells us that we are saved unto love and good works. Works are not a part of salvation, not a requirement for salvation. It is a gift of God. Again, we could spend all day talking about that. But the result of a relationship with God, the the consequence or the fruit of a relationship with God, the expectation of having a relationship with God is that we will do good works. And in our Christian lives, in our lives, in life, in the world, when we're overwhelmed, when we don't know what to do, when our mind is spinning out of control, and we ask, what should we do at those moments in time? Here's what we need to do. We need to do the work. You say, Jeremy, why should I believe you? <laughs> and I would say, you're crazy if you believe me. Don't believe me. Believe the words of God found in Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 3. Here's what it says. Commit thy works unto the Lord, comma, and thy thoughts shall be established. That's one verse. I don't want to take one verse out of context, but so many verses, I've given you some. There are so many others throughout Scripture that help us to understand That a life of faith is a life of action. A life of trust in God is a life of action. Waiting on God does not mean sitting still. Waiting on God means doing what I know to do right now and allowing God to rule and to overrule, to guide and direct. It means I'm not taking my own path. I'm simply taking the step I know to take next. And when God shows me the next one, I'll take that one. As I'm walking, as I'm pursuing what I believe is in front of me, if God takes me a different direction, then he takes me a different direction. I will commit my works unto the Lord God. God, this is yours. I'm doing this for you. Whether you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. God, this is all about you. And the Bible says that if I'll commit my work to the Lord, what's he going to do? He's going to establish my thoughts. This is so upside down from what we believe to be the order. We think That God will establish our thoughts, he'll give us a clear mind, he'll reveal the future to us, and when he does that, we begin moving forward. Here's what God says, begin moving forward and trust that I will guide your steps, that I will give you the thoughts you need, the clarity of mind, and the direction necessary to continue moving forward. Practically, what does this mean? It means, Mom and Dad, you may feel overwhelmed in your parenting. I don't know how I'm going to get this child from where they are to where they need to be down the road. I have no idea what that looks like or how to do that. What it means is that even though you can't see the future, you trust God for it. You pray God, pray for God, uh, God to give you guidance and direction, to give you wisdom. And then you change the diapers. <laughs> you give the bath. You teach the lesson. You help that child to grow and to develop. You get them where they need to go for school, where they need to go for church. You continue to pour into them. You, you get them in bed on time. You do the work you know you're supposed to do. Trust that God will continue to guide you and direct you as you do that work. Related to your career, perhaps you know it's time for a change, but you don't know what that looks like. Some people will quit their job and then pray that God will show them what that next step is. While I don't want to be critical of what anyone does, I would suggest That you get up and you go to work. You do the very best job you can for the employer that you are working for. And you trust God to show you the next step in his time. Maybe he's not ready 
for you to move on. Maybe he has some more for you to do. It, it is time. It's coming. There will be another opportunity. There will be another step, but you're not there yet. Do what you know to do right now and trust God to show you the next step in his time. I could go through example after example, put it in your own context. I think you understand the point. The point, however, that you need to get a hold of and put your hands around and get into your heart is this. I don't have to have all of the answers. Release yourself of the pressure that comes from needing to know everything. You don't need to know everything. I'm not responsible for what I don't know. Release yourself from that. But I am responsible for what I do know. And I'm going to do that. What God has set in front of me, I'm going to do that to the very best of my ability. I'm going to steward over what he's placed in my hands, the opportunities that he's given to me, as big or small as they may seem. I'm going to be the very best I can in all of it. I'm going to trust him while moving forward and allow him to direct my paths. I love this truth. Do the work. When we talk about march or die, man, at some point in your life, it's going to come down to this. It would be easier to stay where I am and die. Why? Because the future is uncertain. The path has gotten hard. Obstacles have presented themselves. It would be easier to just stay here. And what I'm encouraging you to do is to keep going to put one foot in front of the other, to do the work and trust God to direct your paths. This has been such a helpful um, thought, a helpful process for me to go through. I have to be reminded of these things again and again, as perhaps you do. But I'm thankful that God explains to us what he wants. <laughs> He wants us to trust Him. He wants us to have faith in Him. He wants us to abide in Him. He wants us to walk with Him. He wants us to run the race that's set before us. He wants us to pursue Him down that path and allow Him to guide and to direct, to move us as He sees fit. He wants us to do the work while trusting Him for everything else. And in that, there is peace. I hope that is a helpful thought to you today. And again, if you have thoughts on that, let me know. I'd love to hear them. Uh, you can leave comments, certainly wherever it is you're listening from. But the very best place for me is on YouTube. Go over to YouTube, look for my name, Jeremy Stallnecker. Find the channel, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Listen to this, share this content out, leave me some comments. I'd love to connect with you there. And that would be fantastic. March or die. So much of the time in life, it's easier to just quit, to give up, to stop moving. There can be a lot of reasons for that. I don't know what to do. I'm overwhelmed. My brain won't stop spinning. What do I do? You march. You put one foot in front of the other and continue moving forward. Do the work. If it's helpful, you help. That is a help for you today. And I look forward to talking to you next time. Thank you for listening. We will see you next week.